today i'm finally going to be sharing my relocation journey because i don't think i ever mentioned on my channel that i applied for my canada study visa four times before i finally got it i had three visa rejections back to back and today i'm going to be sharing with you my relocation story how you know my visa why my visas were rejected if you are new to my channel my name is lovely and to my returning subscribers thank you for coming again and if you're a new viewer or an old viewer please subscribe to my channel i post videos every wednesday by 5 30 pm and every saturday by 6 pm i hope you stop by again Walk out the door in my little black dress Been a long day and I need to de-stress Sunset So let's just say that my relocation journey actually started back in 2020 during the lockdown So during the lockdown, like I was just frustrated and I really just wanted to like, you know, get out of Nigeria <laughs> I did not have any money I didn't have a job, I did not have no money, I just knew that, oh, I wanted to leave the country. Most importantly, I wanted to like go for my second degree in another country and I was trying the UK. Bear in mind that I did not have any money, I did not have any job. It wasn't like, no, I had more money stacked up somewhere that I would use. So I started applying, I started checking, before I started applying, I started checking out for schools that offered my courses and how much and the process of checking for school, for schools. I knew like too well to check for schools that were like you know very very cheap. So I was actually looking out for schools that their fees were between nine thousand to fourteen thousand pounds per year. Masters in the UK is actually just one year. And by the time I checked all the schools that I knew that they offered the courses that I wanted, I started to like check out for their school fee and the one that I knew that mm -mm, <laughs> maybe oh miracle would happen and I would be able to like you know afford that one and. I'm not kidding like i applied to five schools myself and i was able to get like three admission offers from like out of, i was able to get three admissions offer out of the five schools that i applied to i think i applied to birmingham city university sunderland university um i think i applied to chester as well i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly and then after i went i had to do some of these applications myself that i got offer to three I now decided to like even use UK years to help me apply. I think UK years now is not called intake. They're no longer called UK years. And they also helped me apply to a number of schools and I actually got admission offer again from like two other schools that they helped me apply to. I was still hoping for a miracle, to be honest. I was hoping that oh one money will just come from somewhere or one helper will just come and say, Don't worry, I'll take care of your bills. But eventually I had to dead this plan because there was no money like and all of that like there were other things going on and I, that did not just work so finally i got a job and job started and so fast forward to 2021 end of 2020 december slash beginning of 2021 so an opportunity came for me to be able to you know try again because at that point i knew that the family they are now in a position where okay they can sponsor me and they decided to support me and told me to like you know try but this time i was given the option of canada so i decided to try canada instead and i ditched all my uk plans and all of that so i started to check out for you know schools in canada that would that offer the courses that i would like to study and all of that so eventually a family friend a friend told us about an educational consultation and it's an educational consultant the educational consultant is called jonathan kings limited and their office is located in the badon coco house but due to personal reasons i will not be mentioning or recommending my immigration cons my licensed immigration consultant i hope you understand and bear with me but you can always reach out to jonathan kings limited you can find their phone numbers and address on google so just google them you'll find them that you know as an affiliation with my school yeah and you know how he has helped like a number of people gain admission into the school and also help them with their visa application process and all of that so i came with them we met we spoke they told me the courses that were available in their school and all of that and the breakdown cost of everything and we 
started this whole application process so by january i put in my admission application and i think i put in my admission application around my around last week in january 2021 and by february 11th i got my admission offer and yes i felt like oh let the work begin i knew that getting admission was just like what five percent of everything that you know needs to be sorted of all this immigration worker and all of that so i knew that was out of the way now it was time to pay my school fee and i had to make like a particular deposit for my school before i could get like the letter of acceptance that i would use to apply for my visa and for me struggle began <coughs> so i applied for for me to pay my school fee i used access bank and it took forever in fact i feel like my own forever is like beans in another when i compare with another person's forever because it took one month for my for me to be approved i was going to the bank like almost i'm not exaggerating let me not exaggerate in a week i was going to the bank like twice so luckily the bank had a branch in my workplace so it was very easy for me to say to be going to the bank twice a week so i was always going there twice a week to check and every time i went to the bank they would say oh it's not from their end it's from the headquarters blah 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 there's nothing they can do there are a lot of people on the queue as well blah, blah. i was i'm not joking i was sending mails to their headquarters like back to back i was calling them like eh you people i want to give them lamba oh, for giving me a beg <laughs> I want to give them lumber that oh my school my, my school gave me a deadline to make this deposit and if I miss the deadline this 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 that 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 I'll not be able to kinney come oh other oh, one I don't know if it worked child it did not work but eventually shall like it took them about a month almost a month to you know approve it for me and deduct the money from my account and then send me the receipt so finally for me go approved now time for visa application. I had to start. while I was waiting for for me to get approved, I was already trying my best to gather all my documents because then for my first application, my parents were going to be my parents were my sponsors, and it was their bank statements that I used for my first application. So I was trying to gather every document that I needed for my my parents' bank statements, my parents' employment history, their appointment letter, their registered businesses, landed property everything we shall have gathering everything and once every like once everything was sorted i put in my application and bearing in mind that the educational consultants that i use they assist you with your this like they assist you through your visa application process as well they put you through and they help you and because i knew that oh they've helped other people that i know like no shaking nothing can happen and i just felt like mm, i also get my own once like that and everything and I put in this application and in about two months I got a notification that oh my visa was rejected <laughs> I can laugh now because back then I could never laugh about it it was I don't know it was such a shocker and a big deal so I time I checked the reason why my visa was rejected it was based on the purpose of my visit to Canada I know somebody will be wondering that I would say based on the purpose of your visits when it was clearly written there that oh you're coming there to study you attached your um admission letter you attached your school fee receipts but if Canada says that the purpose of your visit is not clear then it's not clear you probably do not like so by the time I checked because it was my educational consultants that helped with my study letter and they actually wrote there that oh i was coming to study and all of that even though i feel like oh it could have been more detailed and all of that i could have explained oh why i'm coming for this course why this is the course i'm choosing what i want to do with the course when i when i'm done in canada like what would i be doing with the course like, when i'm coming like, when i get back to my country what would i how would i put the course to use and all of that i feel like all of that should have been in the letter as well so i said okay we'll apply again this time around i'm going to write my study letter myself because i felt that you know since the first season was based on purpose of visits that means i need to explain better what i'm actually coming to canada to do even though they know that i'm coming to study but i still need to like give a proper explanation like my career plan my where i've worked before how the work that i was doing before how 
oh no how my previous academic history and my previous job history how does it you know in tune with this course that i want to go for and why i'm going for the course and you know explain everything relating to the course so i said okay you know what i'll do this i will do this application again but this time i'll write my letter myself so time for the second application another new bank statement my parents were still my sponsor got another new bank statement did everything got every document where they landed properties remember landed property i had to use like an evaluator the person evaluated the properties and you know summed everything and the properties were eventually the evaluation was like a very like reasonable amount of money and all of that so second application came i started to write my hello my letter of study and then my letter of explanation i watched don't be stupid out of like I watched a whole lot of videos on how to write a proper LOA. I even watched um is it Noel? I think Noel Abingua. I, I also cannot kill him his name. I watched his videos on how we wrote his LOA. I watched Damilima's video because she read her I said LOA study letter. I watched Damilima's video too on a study letter. I watched everything. I would pause, take notes, watch the videos, I wrote my LOA. I packed stuff in fact. My dad also assisted me with writing my LOA, he read it through, checked all the typographical errors, told me, oh, write this, don't write this, this way, write this one, this way. And I felt, okay, now that I've already explained and, you know, tackled the, the reason for the refusal, maybe they will give me this time, I applied again. And <laughs> in like two and a half months, they got back to me. This particular second rejection, I will never ever in my life forget how I got it because it was few days to my birthday. I was at the salon, I was making my nails for my birthday photo shoot, and this mail came in. And when I checked the mail, I saw that my visa had been rejected again. I didn't even know whether to tell the lady to just leave my nails, let me be going. I know I shall stay by the time I, I shall finish my by the time I opened the mail to check oh the reason why my visa was rejected. Guess what? This time around they had five good like five reasons. Maybe it was only one reason they gave me the first time. This time around they had five reasons why my visa was rejected. And I think part of the reason this time around, I don't think he had yeah, purpose of my visit was part of it. They also mentioned financial come like financial reasons was part of it they also mentioned like you know assets was part of it i think they mentioned that oh i also do not have travel history and then the last one was tied to family ties and all of that five reasons and i was just this time i just felt like oh god this reason that they gave me like is a whole lot how like how did i go from just one reason for refusal to five reasons for refusal and it was just so i just felt oh I don't even know what to do again at this point so this time you know uh my family just decided that okay maybe we should use a licensed immigration consultant this time eventually we got someone to use and i met with the licensed immigration so bear in mind that all these reasons that they gave me my bank statement the, my proof of fund it was more than the requested proof of fund like the assets it was a reasonable amount of evaluated assets fine i've never traveled before that was going to be my first time traveling out of nigeria i didn't put in my um i don't have like a relative in canada so I, as i then like and my cousin was not in canada and so like i didn't like i don't even have like an immediate relative in canada or anything and but like in my application i put together oh my family is back home and i will be coming back to like you know reunite with my family after my study and all of that and i also like <laughs> it was just a whole lot and eventually so back to the story i met this licensed immigration consultant and you know she asked for my two previous refusals and all of that bear in mind that all these applications that i'm doing money is going i'm like i'm spending money like this is not even like say like small amount of money i'm spending money 
and all of that. So I met with this license. I met with the licensed immigration consultant, and then we spoke. She checked the reasons for my refusal, and then she told me that okay, we have to use another approach. You've been using the same approach. The only difference from the approaches that you've used is that oh, you decided to write your study letter yourself. So now, let's use a different approach. Your parents have been the one, you know. You've been using your parents as sponsors. Let's change it this time. It's not like, oh, you're underage or something. You're old enough. So let's use you as your, like, be your own sponsor instead. So we had to, like, you know, start moving the money gradually into my account and use myself as my own sponsor and all of that. And, you know, for your bank accounts, like, they don't want to notice that there's a lump sum of money in your accounts. And you must have been using the accounts for, like, over six months and if there's a lump sum in your account you must be able to you must be able to account for that money and what maybe you must like if there's a lump sum being that maybe if on a good day in that particular account what used to enter is like ten thousand five thousand two thousand all of a sudden you have five hundred thousand you have one million like somebody's depositing five hundred you're depositing one million it's going to be questionable and then you have to be able to explain oh why this particular amount of money why there's a lump sum maybe you sold the land maybe you sold the car maybe somebody gave you as a gift you have to be able to explain so then i had to start working on my i had to start working on my um what's it called on you know creating my proof of fund and all of that so yes strategy changed i became my own sponsor and yes what else this time around she gave me a proper letter of study format to write this letter of study was like five pages <laughs> i'm not exaggerating it was like five pages and i had to like you know go through that format it had like brief introduction brief introduction about me uh my education history my employment history my short-term goals my long-term goals my proof of fund my family ties and all of that and things just switched up a bit so i had to like just switch things up a bit and <clears throat> along the line of all this process too i got married like i didn't put my life on hold because oh I was trying to go to Canada and then oh I just decided to put my life on standstill. No, I was still working. I got married along the line. So strategies changed a bit and I got married. This time around I included my marriage certificate. Also my husband also became like a co-sponsor. So we also had to submit my husband's bank statement as well. So basically it was now me and my husband sponsoring me. So I don't know if it's making sense. So strategies changed and we put it together, check things out, check for things that you're supposed to do, look at, explain why I've not traveled out of Nigeria, but like told them, like I actually let them know that, oh, I've explored within my country and I've been to like the states that I've been to in my country. And this time around, I didn't even use like um, landed properties or anything. I didn't like, you know, submit all the landed evaluation property in the game because basically it was just me and my husband as sponsor so yes and we put in the application bear in mind that my first two rejections was in 2021 i think i had the first one in around april last week in april that was when i got the first visa rejection and then the second rejection i had the second rejection in October, first week in October, everything was in 2021. The first two rejections, I had them in 2021. So fast forward to 20, so I met this licensed immigration consultant towards the end of 2021, after my second rejection. I think I met her in November-ish. That was when I started talking and consulting with her. So we're planning towards, and because it was around that time, that I was planning my wedding to get married. So we were just, you know, discussing. We, were, we knew that whatever thing I was going to do, it was going to be after my wedding and all of that. So we were just discussing. And then I was also using that period as well to gather every document that I would be needing. <clears throat> so by February, I put in my third application. And I was hoping that this one would come true. This one will work because now I'm using a licensed immigration consultant and she's good at that. She's very good, like she's good at her job and I was hoping for the best and you know she... and I put in this application in February, first week of February 2022, and by June, yes, I think by June, 
no not june by may was it june no by may ending yes last week in may updates came on my visa application and yet again my visa application was rejected again and again and this time it was rejected based on two reasons so two reasons my the two reasons that he gave was my financial blah 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 like the financial reason and also assets like i didn't have maybe enough assets like that so and yeah and <laughs> it was just so it was so depressing because not i, mean, I feel like depressing is a big word to use but it was actually very sad because this was the same consultant that i did for my cousin and what made it so sad was that when i got my cousin got a visa approved say for example my cousin got just a week before my visa was rejected like just seven days before my visa was rejected my cousin had gotten a visa approved and it was the same consultant that they did for my cousin and so the moment my cousin told me that oh they've approved our visa and all of that i was already excited i was already feeling like ah, definitely then that means you know in few weeks i should also get mine approved and because we i think she, she applied in january and i applied in february so i was already thinking that in like i was calculating it that in like few weeks you know mine should be approved as well and i was already waiting and in exactly seven days my visa got rejected but I honestly, like, it was very sad, but I just wanted to, like, you know, enjoy my cousin's good news and just celebrate the moment. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my siblings. I didn't tell anybody. It was only my husband that knew, and it was so, it was hard because when my cousin was leaving, I went, I traveled to Lagos. I followed her to the airport. I even, like, had, like, a mini, you know, um, get-together the evening before she left and i cooked and all of that but nobody knew and i didn't tell anybody because i didn't want anybody to start but let's i wanted us to like just focus on my cousin's celebration and just celebrate that and yeah so but like as soon as the third rejection happened the consultant advised that oh she filed in for mm, i've forgotten what this thing is called yeah, she filed in for a reconsideration. While she filed in for a reconsideration, she also put in a new application. So, like, it didn't take... I think the new application was put in in less than a week. So, basically, you know that I told you that for my third application, I had to, like, start building my bank, my proof of funds, because I was going to be my sponsor. So, I was thinking that maybe it was because of that, because, you know, all of a sudden, you are seeing, like, constant credit alerts, constant credit alerts, but there wasn't any major lump sum. Like, it was still around the same amount of money that would probably enter my account every month or maybe weekly or something. So, but, like, imagine, you're seeing constant, constant, like, every day. Money is entering every day, every day, every day. So, maybe that was why. And, but, like, by that, so we just, all I had to do was just get... So all I had to do was just get a new bank statement and get a new my bank statement. My bank statement is different from like the bank statements that you put showing all the detailed history of your transactions that in your account. And my bank statement is just like an e kind of bank statement thing that comes with a pin that would let them assess the you know bank statement and all of that. So yes. In less than in like a week i put in a new application after my third application got rejected and i think the only documents that changed was the new bank statements that i got a recent bank statement of the same account with so like that was the only i used the same documents that i used before oh like i didn't change anything just that i had to change the dates on my study letter the dates on my husband's support letter and change like just make the dates recent dates that was all i had to do and i put in my application and so this new application that i put in i put that in i think on june 2nd yes i think that new application was put in june 2nd yes i think it was put in june 2nd and june 2nd and by september 14th <laughs> drum roll and by september 14th which was even on my brother's birthday, I got my visa approved. 
and it was so i remember when i went to go and drop my brother's birthday cake for him that morning because i went to drop birthday cake for him and it was I think it was bouncing around and joking with me and saying that oh that don't worry this time next year the dollars you'll send me you now have to come and drop cake for me <laughs> and i eat his head and said amen in jesus name and i just went back home and like i was literally just getting home like it was like few maybe like i don't think it was up to an hour after i went back to my place that i got a notification that my visa had been approved like so even when i was calling him back to tell him he was like are you joking <laughs> like i'm not joking so i was telling him that i'm serious that i'm not joking that this just happened and all of that it was just so well and then I told all my family members told my mom told everybody and yes that was how i got my visa approved and yeah after visa approved approval now you know you have to start preparing and preparing to like travel and all of that i also had to like follow up in my school to make sure that my courses were registered and you know i had to update my school on time as soon as i got my visa that oh i've gotten my visa so that they can prepare for the semester ahead and all of that and along the line just f after i booked my flight and everything few weeks to travel i mistakenly rejected my admission like in the process of trying to like check whether they registered me and i don't know what i went to go and press i didn't even realize that i rejected my admission until i got a mail from my school that night saying that oh they noticed that i rejected my admission and they would like to know that was this on purpose or it was i was like hey my village people jesus <laughs> i remember i was telling my sister that night that this is why people don't tell people they are traveling you know that eh eh and i could never <laughs> it was just so but there's so much lessons to learn from my relocation story because i feel like there are so many mistakes that i made that could have been avoided and all of that but really one thing i would say about visa about any type of relocation whether you are relocating to the uk or you are relocating to canada or you are relocating to us or germany anywhere you are relocating to whether through the study routes um work whether work route routes study routes permanent residency routes one thing i would say is do your due diligence like do your own research even if you are using like oh a consultant or anybody like do your own research read on things there are, so good thing about canada relocation is there are a lot of youtube content about it youtube a lot even on instagram so there are a lot of people on instagram that you know they dish out like very well detailed content on relocation through relocation to canada through the student study route or through the pr route is it olu Loye? is it mrs o is it so immigration is it grad life is it uh, like there are just a whole lot of people miss here miss see on youtube like a whole lot of people so take your time do your research even if you are using a consultant or anything make sure that whatever thing they are doing you you are involved in it every step of the way it might look like oh some of them are so once you have a consultant that is you know trying to cover lucky enough now all the people that i use they were not like that they also like they took me i was involved in every step of it but i could have done better do your own research find out on things that you're supposed to find out and take your time pray there's nothing more important than praying like pray to god every step of the way it's not by your power it's not by your strength canada study visa application i would say one thing that i know of is you must do all your own things play your own parts it's very important to pray play your own parts in your canada study visa application but one very very important thing again is pray for grace i'm not joking like grace is very very important pray that whoever the immigration whoever the officer that's going to be handling your immigration or handling your application pray that you know you find favor pray for grace pray for favor pray for mercy pray for sound mind for whoever is going to be wherever your application is anoint it speak positive words on it is very very important because i've seen people that will say that oh they only had like two million in their as their proof of fund and they got their visa and i'm like i don't understand how how do they work but in everything that you're doing just make sure that you're prayerful in my next video i'll be dropping a video on major reasons why maybe your visa 
is being rejected and also how to avoid visa rejection and i hope that you come back next time to watch my video make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe make sure you leave a comment and i will see you again